In this module from our Hiding from Love series, Resolving Our Good and Bad Selves Need. This is part seven of the 12 modules. Thank you for joining us. Resolving Our Good and Bad Selves. You know, in this module, we're going to look at another part of our soul that God has designed to give us the ability to flourish in a sinful world. We have a need to accept the bad parts of ourselves and of the world. It's important because it helps us bring our own badness to a place of forgiveness and have a realistic understanding of a fallen world. If we fail to keep our badness in relationships, that is with God and safe people, then it remains unforgiven and broken. Some people have not experienced sufficient grace to be assured that they will not lose attachment if their faults are exposed. Let's read this passage in Genesis 127. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You know, being made in God's image allows us to see the good and perfect design. We have the ability to experience the good people do for each other and for us. It's such a joy when people treat each other the way they should by design, with patience, forgiveness, and love. But here's the conflict as it says here in Genesis 3, 21 and 22. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. You know, that's the conflict. Because of sin we also know good and evil. So what's that produce in us? Knowing good and evil, well, it produces frustration. And we groan and are burdened. It frustrates us to not experience that perfect world all the time. In Romans 8, verses 20 and 21, it says, for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 4, for while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. And as Paul wrote in Romans 7, 21, so I find this law at work, although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. So you can understand the frustration and the burden and the groaning that we go through because we just don't experience that perfect world being created in God's image. We just don't experience it all the time. You know, a baby attaches very quickly and easily to the mother. It makes sense considering the baby spent about 40 weeks connecting inside the mother's womb. The baby's view of mom is that she is all good. So when mom has to leave the room or leave the baby with someone else or withhold something that the baby wants, then the baby be can become sad or angry because now the baby views mom as bad. This is the fundamental development need to accept and believe that the good can coexist with the bad and with a consistent loving presence, the infant grows to accept that good and bad parts can come from the same person. But this development need continues, you know, and there are 
two to three years old and they get pushed down or bitten by another child for the first time, their first emotion is surprise because they didn't have a place in their understanding for aggression by someone else. No framework for it. Their second emotion may be a sense of betrayal, withdrawal with tears, or it can quickly escalate into rage or anger. This fundamental development need to accept the good and bad parts in their world continues as they age, even into adulthood. You know, as adults, we too need to find that peaceful coexistence between the good but not perfect things in our life and the bad but frustrating things based on our own sin or the sin and imperfections of others. Sometimes people cannot live with both the good and the bad. They separate or they split them to find peace in their ideal world. They cannot tolerate their own sin. So the shame or the guilt paralyzes them or fear grips them so intensely that it controls their extreme efforts to keep those parts hidden. Sometimes a person's struggle with sin is is really a struggle to accept the bad parts of themselves. Because if you think about it, denial never brings freedom. It just never does. Let's look at one biblical example of this struggle to live with both the good and the bad parts of themselves is the rich young ruler. Let's read the story again in Mark 10, beginning in verse 17 to 22. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. You know, the rich young ruler, his problem really wasn't wealth or money, but how he perceived his goodness or badness before God. He had a hard time reconciling his bad self and did everything he could to separate it from his good self by following all these laws. His inability to accept his own badness cost him his salvation. You know, another biblical example is Job. This is a carved wooden figure uh, depicting Job covered in boils. It's, it's in Europe from the Science Museum group collection. In Job 1, verses 20 to 22, after his first day of suffering, losing his possessions and all of his children, it says, At this, Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. What an awesome example. You know, sometime later, after his second day of suffering, losing his health with no relief in sight, it says in Job 2, verses 9 and 10, His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You're talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? 
In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. What a great example of how to respond in the midst of suffering. You know, it's true, eventually Job did kind of snap and could not reconcile the good he had done with his suffering from living in a fallen world. So Job too, even though he had some great responses, he too struggled with this very core need that we have. Let's look at a couple ways that this struggle can play out in our lives. You know, sometimes our thinking can become distorted when we cannot reconcile our bad selves with our good selves. And it sometimes can make our relationships difficult, if not impossible. There's no place in our head or heart for both traits to exist. If we feel loved, we feel good. If there's conflict or frustration in a relationship, we view ourselves or we view the other person as bad. This all or nothing thinking, it, it kind of plays out like this. We, we think it's really very simple. When you agree with me, you're good. When you disagree with me, you must not understand me, so you're bad. You know, it's when we're caught up in this all or nothing thinking, we cannot hold an internal biblical picture of being cherished by God and others during a conflict. There's no place in our hearts for both of those to exist, which often results in self-criticism, withdrawal, or intensely blaming the other person. To be able to resolve the good and bad parts of ourselves and others, it's an important part of our soul. We need this part of our soul to mature and develop. Let's look at another similar effect when this part of our soul is damaged, not mature, or maybe it's just deficient. It's black or white thinking. The inability to make peace with both sides can also lead to this black and white thinking, which views life through a filter that's either all wrong or all right. It's either an all good picture of ourselves or it's an all bad picture of ourselves. You know, a Christian who's struggling with badness attempts to correct it by rigid adherence to the law, kind of like Job. A perfectionist experiences one failure as total failure. You know, if, if the wife burns the dinner, she thinks I'm a bad wife, which that's this all or nothing black and white thinking. It doesn't mean you're a bad wife. You just burn the dinner. We desperately try to keep the good and bad separated by harsh and self-critical expectation of ourselves that no one could achieve. We may develop an inability to live by faith instead of by works. In one sense, we kind of live as an emotional legalist. Let's look at how this may have played out in some people's lives. These hiding patterns sometimes can develop because we haven't reconciled the good and bad parts of ourselves. This is Brenda. She came from a high achieving Christian family with a great deal of positive affirmation. Failure in grades, sports, or student activities was an awkward subject at home or at school. The children tried to avoid failure as much as possible. In college, she led Bible studies and helped other girls with their spiritual lives. Brenda was generally a warm person, but became critical and terse with one girl named Nancy, who struggled more than the other girls. Nancy wasn't as sharp or with the program as the rest of the group. Often Nancy wouldn't have her study assignments done or would cancel because she was overwhelmed with personal conflicts. 
through Nancy's struggles, Brenda was reminded of her own failures, the ones she couldn't show to others. Brenda realized that she functioned better than Nancy, but she also hid better than her. Later, Brenda had a failed dating relationship and couldn't hide her feelings of loss and grief. The group's acceptance and comforted her with their own failures. Their acceptance and this comforting effort they made allowed Brenda to see imperfect as normal. And it helped her empathize with Nancy. You know, but sometimes the opposite can also be true. If there are emotional needs within the parents that begin looking to the children to fulfill, then the children can lose a sense of self because they have to become something their parents need. Jordan was always the star in his family. To fill up the void in his parents' hearts, sports, leadership, and academics all came easy for him. No room for mediocrity. It felt strangely unreal about himself. He said, the real me wasn't there. Just this actor who looked like me. I kind of watched myself from the sidelines. He had almost no memory of several years of his childhood and adolescence Porn became a fantasy world where he could be bad, meaning impulsive, needy, sensual. It became a container for all the unloved, imperfect parts of himself. He didn't have a framework to process both his good and bad parts and still feel admired and loved. He had to keep them separated, the good part of himself that everybody saw and praised, and the bad part of himself that he had to keep hidden. He couldn't reconcile them together. So that kind of sums up this part of our soul, being able to resolve black, bad, and good selves. In the next module, we're going to look at some of the hiding patterns that come from this need not being met, when this need is deficit or uh, immature. We'll look at where this injury came from and some of the hiding patterns we create to avoid dealing with this deficiency. So I hope you'll continue to join us.